Good day everyone. Today we are going to take a look at the Magic Mask that's available in DaVinci Resolve Studio version. So this is the licensed version. You will have to pay for it. But it's one of the many benefits of the Studio version that uh, makes it worth purchasing. And in this demonstration, I'm going to be using the Magic Mask to pull a character from a video clip that I can then use in one of my uh, projection mapping shows I'm working on. Here I have my clip ready to go for this demo. I'm going to pull Winnie the Pooh riding a balloon. And before we get to the magic mask, let's add a color generator under the clip to help with some of the cleanup work that we'll need to do later on. We'll get that by going to Effects, Generators, Solid Color, and I'm going to bring that underneath the video clip I have on Video Track 1. And then I'll trim the solid color generator to match the clip length using the control B shortcut on my keyboard and delete the excess. Now let's go up to the inspector and we're going to change the color of this generator. I like to use a very bright green for this. Now let's open up the color page where we can access the magic mask. I need to resize this a bit so I can see. So I'm going to use the scroll wheel to zoom in or zoom out. And I can reposition the view by holding down the middle mouse button and just moving my mouse. Now we can play with the magic mask, which is this icon right here. And you want to make sure you have the object mask selected for this. Under quality, we want to choose the better option to give us a bit more control. Then bring the refine range down to around 10 as a starting point. Next, move up to the nodes pane here. Right click and select add alpha output and then connect up the blue point on the first node to the blue point in the alpha output. Let's pick a starting frame. Where you put your starting point matters. If the asset is coming into the shot from the outside, you would want to start in the middle of the video clip and then track forward and backward. If the asset you want is always in the shot, you could start at the beginning and just track forward. In this shot, Winnie the Pooh is front and center the whole time. And I could start from the beginning of the clip, but I'm going to start in the middle just so you can see how that works. Now we can start adding strokes using our stroke tools. Right here are the stroke tools we will use. The one with the plus sign is the add tool and minus sign is for subtracting. Make sure the plus tool is selected. And for the first stroke, make a trace sort of outlining the entire character and anything else you want to pull in from the shot. So here we'll take both the bear and the balloon. And then when you complete this outline, weave back and forth within the asset so you capture as much of its color as possible. Once you let go of that mouse button, you should see the green background we put underneath in the edit page showing through. We can compare this to the original video clip by using the toggle mask overlay button and we're going to need to use that quite a bit once we get into some real cleanup work. But this shot looks pretty good so let's use the track forward and backward button located here and let it do its work, what that's going to do is try and pull this same asset from all the frames in this clip. Once that's done, we can review it. Let's turn off the overlay here so we can see what we grabbed a bit easier. And just click play to see if anything stands out. I don't see anything ugly so far. We can use the time control here in the viewer window to slowly scan through and see if we need to fix anything. So for this clip, there's nothing really to fix. This one pulled real nice and clean, but I wanna show you how you can fix clips up if you have to. So let's pull in something that's a little bit tougher for Resolve to figure out. So here's another shot I would like to pull featuring Merlin. And there are some remaining artifacts here that need to be cleaned up. We can do that with the minus stroke tool. Let's slash some extra strokes across these colors that we don't want. And we will track this forward and backward. Now that that's done, we can use the timeline control again to scan through and look for any frames that might have some missing parts. And going through this, we can see a lot of mistakes. Now, if this had like four or five off frames, I'd just fix them and retract the whole thing. No big deal, but with a clip like this, there's a lot going on. So I'm going to show you the most efficient way to fix majorly screwed up clips like this one. We'll start that at the reference frame. So if you click this button here, that's going to take you back to the reference frame, which is the very first frame we added our strokes to. 
and we're going to work from the reference frame to the end of the clip. So we'll use the time controls and we'll move one frame forward at a time looking for things to fix. And when we find one, we'll add or remove strokes as needed. And then using this button here, we'll track forward one frame, review that frame, apply any fixes, and then track one frame forward again. If the next frame looks fine, don't assume the whole thing is good. Just keep tracking one frame forward until you get all the way to the end. This admittedly can get tedious if your clip is incredibly long. You have to really want an asset to go through this. If you find yourself getting frustrated or bored, walk away for 10 minutes and come back to it when you're fresh. If your reference frame is in the middle of the clip, don't forget to perform the same step, but this time you're gonna track one frame backward until you get all the way to the beginning. Once you've gone through all your frames and it's all cleaned up, if it looks a little fuzzy around the edges, you can clean that up using this radius slider here. That's gonna bring those edges in and get rid of any blurriness or extra color spillover you might see. From there, you can use a little bit of the clean black, clean white sliders to make any fine tune adjustments. Once you've completed this process and you're happy with the asset that you now have, Export this out into an MP4 with the green screen background included, or you can export it as an MOV file and retain the transparency and leave out the green background. You can see here I have quite a few characters I've pulled for my upcoming show, and on average it takes 10 to 20 minutes to get what I've needed now that I got the hang of this tool. So that's all I have for you now for the Magic Mask. Again, it does require a studio version license, but I think the purchase is worth it for this and a few other tools that you get that I consistently use when working with Resolve. Well, I hope you dug this one, and until next time, take care of yourselves.